So Mike, this is the Grand Slam business plan in a very simplified version, right? For people that want to be successful in starting a business. It is. Let's go ahead and go through each one of these steps though and kind of give the recipe for success and how someone can create a business plan from scratch and make a successful business. Awesome. Do you know why most businesses fail? Because they don't have a direct plan of action. They fail to recognize the importance of a business plan and end up doing more harm than good. But don't worry about that because we are here with Mike Andes, who is gonna teach us how to write a stellar business plan step-by-step. Step. So this is very important to figure out how am I gonna communicate my message and how am I actually going to transact with people. How long should your business plan be? In my opinion, I like a page or two max. With regards to financial projections, you know, how do you properly forecast your numbers? Funding this operation and funding the business plan is really important. And Mike Andes is not new to this business. He owns a multi-million dollar business and he knows how to plan things right. So let's go learn from Mike. You guys, we are here with Mike Andes. Thank you for being with us again oh, over and over. Tell us and those who haven't seen you a little bit about you and your business background. Yeah, so I started mowing lawns when I was 11 years old, and now we've grown up Augusta Lawn Care to be 40 locations around North America. I own a gym, do real estate and stocks and other stuff like that, but kind of just an entrepreneur through and through, I'd say. That's awesome. Well, we can't wait to hear from you about how to write a stellar business plan. So look forward to it. Let's do it. All right, you guys, we're going to dive into helping you write a awesome business plan. Step by step. Mike, let's dive into it. The first part of the business plan, the first part in chronological order of a business plan is mm -hmm. the executive summary. Okay. So the executive summary is a great place to get started with the business plan and it needs to really draw the reader in. So whether you're giving this to a banker or an investor, it needs to be short, not, not longer than a page, draw them in and give them a reason why they should keep reading the business plan. Section one, executive summary. In this section, you ask yourself, why does the business exist? What is your business mission or mission statement? Why should investors be excited about the business? How important is, at this point, the vision mission statement in terms of a business plan? Yeah, like I look at the business plan a lot of times going to an investor or a banker, right? And really, in my mind, the vision, the mission, really is selling them on the idea as to why this business is going to be successful. If Got I'm it. trying to get investment, I want to get people passionate about what I'm trying to do. So sometimes a good place to put is in the executive summary, why does the business exist? What's its mission? Why does it like? Why are we starting this thing? Right. Uh, and putting that in the executive summary is a way to hook them into what you're trying to do. Got it. Step number one is figuring out which product or service you're going to sell into the market. Now, opportunities are all over the place. For example, I could take the sugar, figure out how to source it. I could sell this to a you know, grocery store nearby you. I could take some of these elastic bands. I could manufacture these and create these for the office. We need them here. Or maybe I, you know, because of COVID and everything else, I could go, go create masks. So these are all opportunities. They're all over the place. Now you gotta figure out how you can execute and create a plan around that. So first here we got sugar. Then we got elastic bands. Then we got masks. All opportunities to make money and create a business. Section two, business opportunity. In this section, ask yourself the question, what products and services do you see as most viable? Is there a product or service that you feel solves a problem? What is your solution to that need or problem? What are the potential downsides and upsides of the business? We talked about business opportunity at the office there. Uh, what's the next step? Yeah, the next thing is the sales and marketing plan. All right. Cool. So this is gonna include really how are you going to get your product or service and actually tell people about it. Mm -hmm. I kind of look at marketing as sharing your message. Like how do I get people? And this is like, when we think about Facebook ads and Google ads, or maybe even mail, all these different forms of marketing, this is what you need to iron out in this part of your business plan. Like how am I gonna actually tell people that I offer this service or this product that I think is so great? How am I gonna tell them about the need they have for what I'm selling? Uh, the sales part, there's so many different ways to sell things. You can do it in person. 
like a retail store. Right. You can do it over e-commerce online. You can do it direct to consumer or you can go through a wholesaler or a distributor. There's so many different ways to figure out sales and it's going to really be determined by your business plan and then really going to govern everything to do with the business. For example, if I'm doing direct to consumer, I don't need to go get retail stores and get a bunch of real estate involved and salespeople to sell in person. It's going to be a completely different model. So this is very important to figure out how am I going to communicate my message and then how am I actually going to transact with people direct to consumer, through a wholesaler, through a distributor. There's so many different avenues of sales. Section three is sales and marketing. In this section, ask yourself, how do you tell people that they need your product or service? How do you communicate your message with people? How will they transact with you? What business model will you use? And what are your sales projections? So when we're looking at this so far three-step process, are we looking at a year ahead? Are we looking at three years, four years, five years? What are we doing in terms of timing at this stage in time? Yeah, like we've mentioned already, like, you know, a business plan, day one, things change. And mm -hmm. I think most investors realize that what they want you to see is that you've actually thought about the potential downsides and upsides of what you're product or business is going to become. Okay. They want to see that you've actually thought about what happens if the labor market changes, what happens if technology changes. And the further out you, you're thinking, they actually start to see, oh, like they know what they're talking about and they have a plan in place when things go bad because something's going to go bad. It never is smooth sailing. Gotcha. Okay. So there are a lot of components, you guys, to a business plan, to a really good business plan. And we have a complete guide on how you can write a business plan on our upflip.com forward slash blog. So make sure you check that out. The link is going to be in the description below. Step number two is that you have to do market research and analyze that data to make sure that the product or service you're offering the market is actually going to be accepted and they want to buy it. So let me show you this. Around just this office right now, we can do a little bit of market research around drinks. For example, I might be wanting to sell a drink and make a business around that. I'm going to look right now and say, okay, we got coffee here that's cold. We also have some other water. We have someone who does not have a drinking cup on their table. Over here, we have someone with coffee. Over here, we have someone with a reusable cup. And so I'm going to take all of that data, and this is when you're going to go talk to people, survey people, maybe do some market research around who accepts what type of drink and who is it carbonated? Is it a reusable cup? Is it a cold cup, a cold drink? Is it a hot drink? These are all different types of data points you need to know when you do your market research to make sure your product or service is going to be purchased. Section four is market analysis. In this section, ask yourself, have you talked to people and surveyed people? What data points have you studied? What types of market analysis have you done? What customer demographics are you looking for? What kind of location or physical location will you need? The next thing we need to think about is company organization. So a lot of times when we look at company organization, we're thinking about an org chart. So let's go over to this whiteboard and I'll show you what an org chart might look like when you're first thinking about your business. Now, what's really unique about when you first start your business is the fact that your name might fill in multiple boxes at the beginning. And this is a kind of traditional hierarchy of a business as you look at a, you know, maybe this top part, this the position is gonna be the CEO, then maybe you have office manager over here. So for example, you have different positions underneath the CEO's level position, and then underneath each of these people, you're also gonna have probably employees down the road. This might be you know, a five years down the road kind of plan, but what's going to happen is when you first start your business, you're probably going to fill in a lot of these boxes. So what I would do is have an org chart. What are the positions that you need? And then fill out next to it. Okay, Mike is gonna fill this role. Oh, but you know what? At the beginning, there's only two employees. So Mike is also gonna have to fill this role and he's gonna to have to fill this role. At, to start off, down the road, we'll have to get a, our own advertising manager to replace him in that position. But maybe there's, if there's only two people starting, Mike is the office manager, the advertising person, the CEO, et cetera, and then say Bob, he's also the sales manager, he's the production manager, he's also gonna be on the front lines, you know, actually on the floor of creating the product or service. So this is what an org chart's gonna basically look like. What are the positions, and then who is responsible to actually carry out those functions within the business? That might change, that will change as the business grows. Section five is about company organization. In this section, ask yourself, have you built an organizational chart yet? What is your business hierarchy? What positions are offered at your company? What positions will you need filled and when? Who is responsible for what and how will they get the job done?
Great question, 10 seconds, let's dive into it. Um, how often do you look at a business plan? Uh, I probably look at four or five a week. Four or five times a week. Um, how do you define unique sales proposition and how do you make yourself stand out in your business? A unique selling proposition, I think, really has to do with the owner himself. Like your age could be a unique selling proposition, your experience, uh, your level of expertise in a certain area. That's really your USP, or unique selling proposition in my mind. Okay. How long should your business plan be? In my opinion, I like a page or two max to understand. But if you're going to be going to a bank or to a lender or trying to get an investor, they're probably going to want something quite a bit more substantial, like 30 or 40 pages. Okay. How do you measure your success? I measure my success honestly by my contentment and my happiness. If I'm content, I feel like I'm successful and that's really how I measure someone else's success as well. Uh, do you need to have an exit strategy? Um, I think so, but sometimes your exit strategy can be that you're going to keep it forever or you're going to hand it off to your kids one day. And so it could be a generational business down the road. Can you make amendments to a business plan? Absolutely. Honestly, I think day one you make an amendment because like you can have a plan in place, have a map in place, but it's not like a GPS that's like perfectly guided. Things change, things happen, detours happen, and that literally starts the moment you're in business. So it's a given. Yep. Why are business goals important? I think it's really important just to have something to chart your success against. Right? Whether your goals are really lofty and you fall short of them, or whether you surpass them and beat them, having those goals is something to benchmark yourself against. All right, so you guys, we are in step five, company organization, which you briefly touched on. What's the next step? Let's keep going. It's really looking at financial projections and what the business is gonna do in the future when it comes to money, sales, et cetera. Okay. With regards to financial projections, um, you know, how do you properly forecast your numbers? What's the, what's the process look like? Yeah, I think everything builds on itself. For example, if I'm spending money on marketing and I know my customer acquisition costs, okay. if I know how much I'm spending on marketing, I should know how many customers I'm going to get. Then I got to figure out, okay, well, how much is each customer worth to my business? How much per customer is going to bring into this company? That can give me a kind of a good sales figure. Mm -hmm. Then what the, the people that you're going to be showing this business plan to, like a banker, an investor, et cetera, they're going to be really interested in what do those projections look like over time? Are they growing? Mm -hmm. Are your sales growing? Is your profits growing? This is really, really important when it comes to selling either a, like a, getting funding, which we'll get into in a second, or when it comes to convincing people to come work for you when you're a startup and you really don't have much track record. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, how realistic is it to actually meet those projections and set, set the right expectations with our viewers that that may be not the case. How do you adjust? How do you shift? Everything with the business plan, you're just you're really guessing, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to you're trying to have data behind those guesses, and you're wanting to come up with, with, like I said, how much were you spending on marketing? Well, maybe the industry average of customer acquisition cost or CAC, you can get that. You can figure out what the average for the industry is, mm -hmm. and then project based upon that what your sales are going to be. So I think it's always a guess, and I think anyone looking at a business plan knows that hey, these aren't going to happen. These are not you know historical data that points that we're giving, but it's our best guess based upon data that we have, proving to people that you have good data is the important part. Do I have industry average for customer acquisition costs? Do I have industry average for lifetime value of a customer to come up with the sales projections? Mm -hmm. That's what's really important because we know someone's either going to go higher or below. Right. It's not getting it right. It's about having a step-by-step -step process of what's going to happen when things go wrong. To get started as well. Exactly. Okay. You guys, uh, this is for you. We do have a fully downloadable PDF business plan outline in the description below as well. So make sure you hit that link and uh, take advantage of it. Section six, financial projections. In this section, ask yourself the following and use the above section of the business plan to build out the financial projections. How much do customer acquisition cost? What is the industry average of the customer acquisition? How much will each customer bring into the company? What is the industry average? What are your financial projections over time? How will sales and profits grow? What's after financial projections? It's like the old saying, it takes money to make, to make money. money. There you go. So funding this operation and funding the business plan is really important. And it's gonna be really important for a banker or an investor, they're gonna wanna know this stuff. Okay. I like that part of the word funding is the word fun. <laughs> well, sometimes it's not so fun trying to pitch this to a <laughs> banker or an investor, but it's very important. How are you going to actually make, get the money to make this all happen? Mm -hmm. Create the product, create the service, buy trucks or equipment, the real estate, the office space, whatever you might be needing. How are you going to fund it? You can bootstrap it. That means you're coming up with the money yourself. Yep. Maybe you even go into debt 
you can use debt to fund, finance the business. Uh, you can go ahead and get an investor that's going to give you angel round or uh, seed funding and give you the money. It's investing in the business. Uh, and there's, there's just so many different ways that you can get the money. It's a matter of what's going to be the best thing for the business. Is the business high growth where you want investors and they're going to be getting equity in exchange for money? Or is this something that you want to bootstrap or maybe get a loan from your local credit union where you can actually do this without having to go to investors? Because it sounds shares. great to get free money from an investor. But trust me, this has got to be bulletproof for someone to just give you money and say, good luck, go for it. On that note, is it is it a variation of different business plans when I go to the bank versus I, when I go to investors or seed angels and things like that? Yeah, like honestly, most investors that are, you know, friends and family, for example, they can be considered investors. They're not going to sit down and, and you know, read a 40 page financial document. But definitely if you're going to a bank, if you're going to an angel round or sophisticated like VC venture capitalists, they're going to be wanting to see every Everything. single data point. Where, where did these numbers come from? Where do these industry averages that you came up with, where did they come from? You have to have a lot of proof behind that. So a lot of times most small businesses get started with bootstrapping or loans from a local bank. Right? right, just the easiest form of doing so, and usually the requirements of all that business plan being exactly ironed out is less stringent than if you were trying to go raise funding right. from a venture capitalist or an angel investor. Okay, and how do I determine how much money is needed? I mean, out of all these six, seven steps, what's two or three steps determine this is how much cash I need to get going? Yeah, I think I really believe at number two, really, you know, figuring out your business opportunity. What is the MVP or the mm -hmm. minimum viable product? Got it. How how much do I need to get? How much money do I need to just to get started? Like if I'm trying trying to start my landscaping business, I don't need a massive truck and a big trailer and a bunch of chainsaws. I might start with a rake, a shovel, and start weeding and maybe trimming a couple bushes. So minimum viable product is very very important because yeah, that's wow. what the people you're pitching are going to be interested in. How how soon can you make money and actually make this a profitable business? Section seven is about funding. In this section, ask yourself, are you catering your business to the funding type you are seeking? What is the MVP or minimum viable product? How much money do you need to get started? How soon can you make money and make this a profitable business? You also want to outline the money needed and plan how the money will be spent. Mike, I know we can talk forever about business plans here and there, but I think what we've done is summarize it in a really good way. So thank you for that. Thank you for all this. Uh, any last words of wisdom? And tell people also how we can find, how they can find you. Yeah, I think the most important thing is to get started, right? I think so many people, they see all of this and they're so intimidated. Get started. Day one is not easy, but get started on the journey. And in terms of following me, you know, just search Mike Andes on YouTube or Facebook or something in TikTok, any, any of those will work. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you take a few seconds, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and we also love hearing your comments. We read all of them. Thank you so much for watching.